Welcome to your first Blue Ridge Technologies training session for Essentials Software. Essentials is the configuration tool for Aperio Platform products. The primary purpose for Essentials is to define the relationship between lighting control hardware and the space that it controls. There are three objectives for today's training. First, we'll define for you the terms and basic concepts used in Essentials. Secondly, we'll walk you through the installation process. And finally, we'll introduce you to the Essentials interface as we configure a sample lighting control system. So let's get started. Let's begin by defining the basic terms and concepts used in Essentials. The terms we'll define can be divided into two categories. First, network terms, which deal with hardware and then building terms, which deal with space. We'll start with the network terms. These terms include controller, satellite, station, relay outputs, and universal inputs. To define these terms, we we'll use our basic system riser diagram. You can see we have a BACnet MSDP network and a subnetwork called the satellite station network. Let's start with controller. Controller resides on the BACnet network, and in this case we have a zone control. Controller has inputs and outputs, and features a line voltage feed for power. This is controller. Satellite is our next term, and satellite resides on the satellite station network, and satellite is a expander for the controller and provides additional input and output capacity. This is satellite. Our next term is station. Station also resides on the satellite station network, and station provides a user interface. This is station. Relay outputs, or RO, are featured on both the controller and satellite, and they drive the lighting load. These are relay outputs. Our final term is universal inputs, or UI. Universal inputs provide an input to the device, and in this case we have an occupancy sensor terminated to that universal input. This is universal input. Now that we've defined our network terms, let's set up defining the building terms. Building terms include system, area, zone, and channel. We'll begin with system. System is a contextual term. It can be as small as a single building with an automation system, or larger to include multiple buildings on a campus level, or larger still to include multiple campuses. For our training, we'll define a system that encompasses our downtown office building. And that brings us to our next term, which is area. Area is a logical division of the system. You utilize an area to divide a system into more manageable pieces for configuration. We'll divide our downtown office system into areas according to floor. And we'll be concentrating on the second floor. We have the associated floor plan on the right. And that brings us to our next term, which is zone. Zone is a division of an area, and it is driven by occupant requirements, such as scheduling needs or control strategy needs. It can also be driven by hardware limitations. Let's have a look at how we would divide our area into zones according to scheduling needs. Take the two open office areas. The accounting team is a 9 to 5 operation. However, the sales team gets in at 9 and leaves at noon. Because of these unique scheduling requirements, we would create a zone for the accounting office and a separate zone for the sales office. Let's look at how we would define more zones given unique control strategy needs. The corridor, for instance, is a public space and we want to have the lights on in the corridor as soon as the first employee gets off the elevator in the morning. Because of this, we would 
utilize an auto on strategy for the corridor and we would create the corridor as its own zone. By contrast, we would use a manual on strategy for this private office to achieve additional energy savings and as such we would create a zone for the private office. For today's training, we'll concentrate on the conference room zone. And this brings us to our final term, which is channel. Channel is a division of a zone that is used to configure the relationship between inputs and outputs based on occupant use. We have a number of inputs and outputs to configure in our conference room. For inputs, we have the occupancy sensor in the corner and our station by the entry. Our outputs include our recessed incandescent fixtures around the perimeter and our interior fluorescent fixtures. Now, because of the need for high and low level lighting in our conference room, we'll configure our fluorescent fixtures in a bi-level control strategy. To create the channels for all of these inputs and outputs, we will refer to our list of configurations available on the right side of your screen. We will reference this list throughout the remainder of training, and this list was completed based on our engineering schedule for our sample job. A template for this engineering schedule is available at our website at brtint.com forward slash dealer underscore tools. Now using our floor plan and our list of configurations, let's look at the channels we'll create for our inputs and outputs. We'll begin with our first channel, interior high. For inputs, we have the occupancy sensor and the top button on our station providing on-off control for our exterior lamps and our fluorescent fixtures. Let's look at our next channel, interior low. For inputs, we have the occupancy sensor and the middle button on our station providing on-off control for the interior lamps of our fluorescent fixtures. And this brings us to our final channel, perimeter. For inputs, we have our occupancy sensor and our bottom button on our station providing on-off control for our incandescent fixtures. Now let's review the terms we've defined thus far. On the network side, which deals with hardware, we've defined controller, satellite, station, relay outputs, and universal inputs. On the building side, which deals with space, we have defined system, area, zone, and channel. All right, now that we have defined all the terms and basic concepts that are used in essentials, let's get you started with essentials and begin the installation process. Essentials is available as part of TechKit 2.0. Essentials and its supporting files are on the USB flash drive. This is the only part of the kit you will need for installation. However, do confirm that your computer meets these requirements. You will need Windows XP or Windows 7 in 32 or 64-bit variety, the latest version of Java, as well as a USB 2.0 port. These specifications are available in the TechKit datasheet at our website at brtint.com forward slash accessories. Now let's install Essentials. I have the USB flash drive open on my computer. The first step to installation is creation of a new folder for Essentials and its supporting files. I'll go ahead and create that on my desktop, name it Essentials, and open that folder. And then I will copy the Essentials executable, that's brtessentials.exe, from the flash drive to the uh, folder I just created. And then I can run Essentials. As simple as that. If you encounter an antivirus warning, go ahead and allow Essentials to run. 
If you encounter a Java warning, you most likely don't have the latest version of Java and you will need to download that. However, this completes the installation of Essentials. Now that we have Essentials installed and running, we can begin to explore its interface as we configure our sample job, the downtown office. All of the configurations I will complete today are available in our configuration list on the right side of your screen. The first step to configuration is creation of a system file. I can create a system file in the file menu and choosing new. Uh, this is also where you have access to your open system and save functions. I can create a system file as well using the uh, new system icon in the toolbar. I will create a new system, name it Downtown Office. And then before we move on, I will save our system. I'll use the Save icon on the toolbar. And by default, Essentials saves system files to the folder you created for it during installation. I will name our file Downtown Office. and select save and you'll notice the name of the file we're working with appears in the title bar also system files have an extension of dot brt for easy recognition now that we've created our system we can begin our configuration you'll notice in the bottom left hand corner of your screen you have a tab for the network tree and a tab for the building tree we'll begin with the network tree this is where we add hardware to our system and configure the relationships between that hardware. We have three pieces of hardware to add, the controller, the satellite, and the station. We'll begin with the controller. To add hardware to a system, you can use the configure menu and select the hardware you'd like, or right click in the tree and choose the hardware. I'll add a controller and name it ZC SS. And you'll notice the details that apply to the hardware I've selected in the tree appear on the right side of your screen in the detail pane. Each section in the detail pane can be expanded or collapsed with a click. This is where I'll do my configuration for that controller. I'll start by adding a controller type. We have a zone control switching standard. Collapse that section and then I'll configure the universal input that is terminated to that controller by selecting a type and this is an occupancy sensor. Now let's add our satellite. To add a satellite I will select add satellite, give our satellite a name SCSS and then select our slot which is one and our type which is switching standard and now we're ready to add our station to add a station I will select the controller level and add a station give our station a name 3CH and then select our address which is 0 and our type which is 3 channel and we have one more piece of functionality to look at and that's the move up and move down feature. This allows you to arrange the tree in the way you'd like it. With the station selected I can use the move up arrow to move it up the tree and the down arrow to move it down the tree. This is also available in the pop-up menu. So we have added our controller, our satellite, and our station to our system. And it's important to note that we selected a type for each of these items, and this affects the configuration we'll do next. So this concludes the network configuration, so I will save our work before we move on. Now that we've added all of our hardware to the network side, we'll begin to assign this hardware control of a space. To work with space, we'll move over to the building tree, which I will access by selecting the building tab in the lower left-hand corner. And you'll notice the only item available in the building tree is the system. We will add our area, zone, and channels. 
We'll begin with the area. I will select add area and give our area a name, second floor. And then we're ready to add our zone. I will select add zone. Give our zone a name, conference room. And this is where we assign the controller we set up on the network side control of our zone. I'll select the controller we need, which is ECSS. If you had a larger network and had more controllers set up, you would have additional options in this drop down menu. Now that we've configured our zone, let's begin adding our channels. We'll start with our first channel, Interior High. Uh, we'll add a channel name it interior high and I will begin by setting up our occupancy sensor we want universal input 0001 as our sensor input then we can assign our relay I will add a relay and for this channel we need relay 0001 and finally, we'll set up our station. I will add a station and then we need an on-off station. We need our 3CH station. And the top button on that station will control this channel. Now we're ready for our second channel, interior low. To add a channel, I select the zone level. Add a channel. Name our channel Interior Low. Set up our occupancy sensor. And configure our relay assignment. This time we want relay 0002. And you'll notice this list got shorter. Every time you assign a relay control of a channel, it's removed from your selectable list. And finally, we'll set up our station. We want an on-off station, our 3C8 station, but this time we want the middle button to control our channel. And now we're ready for our final channel, perimeter. Again, I'll select the zone level, add a channel, name our channel, set up our occupancy sensor, complete our relay assignment. We want relay 0101. And add our station the on-off station, we want our 3CH station, but this time we want the bottom button to control this channel. And there you have it. We've added our three channels, and thus far on the building side, we've added our area, our zone, and our channel's interior high, low, and perimeter. And this concludes the building tree setup. So before we move on, I will save our work. In conclusion, let's review. We began on the network tree. And the network tree is where we added our hardware and we assigned the relationships between that hardware. We started by creating our system file and then we added our controller, our satellite, and our station. And we configured each of these. We then moved to the building tree. And the building tree is where we assigned the hardware control of a space. Here we added our area, our zone, and our channels, and we configured each. And now we have a working system file for our sample job in the downtown office. And you have the tools you need to configure a lighting control system inside of Essentials. Thank you for watching.